say, man, it's the war zone. But we talking about child support tonight. Say, I need some theme music, man, for real. I need some new theme music, man. It's what it is, though. I want to welcome you to the hottest show in social media history. It's the war zone, baby. Tonight, we're talking about child support. Who the gold digger, the man or the woman? I got my beautiful co-host, Demetra K. And I got my new co-host, Donovan Sadiq. And bruh, we gonna introduce her in a second. But we done brought the lawyer on the show too. So if you got some questions, you gonna be able to ask a real live attorney tonight, bruh. Man, killer music, man. That's just how it is in court. When you go to court for child support, whole atmosphere can change at the drop of a dime. I want to welcome y'all to the war zone tonight. Say what's going on with you, man. What's going on with you? I see I got my co-host, Demetri K in the building. My new co-host, Donovan Sadiq, is in the building. And young lady, if you could do us a favor, introduce yourself. She getting her mic unmuted, y'all. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to join this conversation about child support. My name is Brenda Duran. I am a licensed Texas attorney practicing primarily in Harris County and surrounding areas. I specialize in family law litigation. So that's divorce, child support, child custody, adoption. Anything related to the family is within my purview. So I'm happy to be here, happy to answer any questions and give you the legal opinion that's on the in the Texas family code so that you guys can get a better understanding of child support in Texas. So thank you so much for having me. No problem. Demetra, go in, baby. I'm a victim. Well, okay, I'm going to take the lead uh, once again because uh, Gary is a victim. He has been brutalized by the child support system. And so uh, I'm going to take over this evening without asking the questions. And so uh, for those of you guys who saw the show yesterday, it was uh, pretty heated uh, and it was very informational and um, uh, some great things happened. Uh, some uh, relationships are starting to uh, mend. And so it's a great thing. I mean, it's a good thing that we're having this discussion because people are all over the place with how they feel about child support. There's a lot of people who are for it and there's a whole lot of people who are against it. And there's some people who are in between. And so what we're going to try to do tonight as well as get to some of your comments. Now, I know there's a lot of them. I think we had what about 500 or so more. Easily. Uh, last night. So obviously we're not going to read all 500 of them, but we're going to, um, all of us are going to try to do is uh, get some of the questions or comments that stick out and try to address those. And so um, the first comment I um, actually think is a, a pretty good uh, statement. And so I want to get you guys' opinion uh, with a true or false. And that is uh, uh, the child support system should be abolished. True or false. And Gary, let's start with you since you're the victim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it needs to go. I mean, bottom line, was it created to actually help the child or was it actually created for the state, the state I'm in Texas, for the state of Texas just to make money off of it? You know, I, I don't I don't support it. I don't I don't feel that a judge understands that, you know, when you give me visitation rights, you telling me I can visit my child twice a month. But yet I need to develop a relationship with my child. So I, I don't like the system and I think it needs to go. And let's have well, um, I, I don't necessarily think it needs to, uh, you know, be abolished completely, but it does need to be revamped because uh, it it's not working to benefit families. It's really making families even more alienated from each other. And it's causing so many problems. It's putting so many people in debt. It doesn't make sense that uh, in some situations, the guy is proven not to be the biological father, but he still has to pay for a child that's not his. So, this, you know, there's something wrong with that. 
when they say it's in the best interest of the child that this guy continues to pay, even though the guy that was supposed to be the father didn't meet the minimum 30 days or whatever, why is it that you can get off death row based on DNA, but you can't get off child support? Mm. Our attorney, go ahead and take it away. <laughs> Listen, I'm listening to some of these opinions and my mind is blown. I'm gonna answer your question. That que the answer to that question is false. We need child support. The problem that we're having is there is a lack of education, a lack of knowledge about how the child support system works, how the office of the attorney general works. And I don't think a lot of people understand just because you're paying child support does not necessarily mean that the office of the attorney general has to be involved. So I'm going to say that it does not need to be abolished, that we need to educate more people and that we need to understand why, ch why child support is here and how does it work. Work and what rights do obligors, the people who are paying child support, have when they come into situations that create problems for them in their lives? Gary? Well, I'm like like Donovan. If you, if you keep it, it's a lot of things that have to change. I'm going to give you an example. This is the one thing that irks me to death. If you go on the child support court and the mom is the custodial parent, and she continuously misses court. A lot of time, they'll just keep resetting. They'll reset it, reset it, reset it, reset it. The first time the father missed the court, default judgment, and they sting it. All you got to do is miss court one time and not be the custodial parent, and you're going to get got. I think if we keep it, a lot of things have to change. All right, so uh, let's have the attorney answer this one. Someone wants to know if the custodial parent drops the child support, can they pick it back up? I guess at a later date. That's a great question. And I'm happy to answer that. People have to understand there is a difference between having the office of the attorney general involved in your case and having a private lawsuit where parents have agreed to some amount of had a trial to determine what the amount of child support is supposed to be. When the office of the attorney general is involved, mom is not necessarily the petitioner. It's the state of Texas. And so as the state of Texas, in filing an enforcement or doing what they need to do to make sure that child support is paid, mom is essentially a witness in the case, if you will. Um, and I'm just saying this so people who are not licensed attorneys can kind of understand why there's resets. So if your witness is not available, a lot of people know about criminal trial. If the witness is not available, then they're going to reset it until that witness is able to appear. And so if it is the office of the attorney general case, absolutely, they will reset it. However, there's another part of that that I think a lot of people don't understand is a lot of times dad is just coming to court or mom, whoever the obligor is, is just coming to court and they're not filing anything in court. And so if you file something in court and you show up to court, you may actually have remedies available to you, you know, to get a default in favor of you. Okay, so I, I want to um, ask this also as a true or false question. If I can't see my child, then I shouldn't have to pay. True or false? And so let's start with, I want to always get the attorney last because you're going to bring like the knowledge and like the, the real deal. So let's start with Donovan. You should always, you're always going to be the parent. So you should always have access to your child if you're paying or not. Unfortunately, you've got some women that feel, I carried this child for nine months, you know, it came out of my body and I've got the jurisdiction and this is how it's gonna be. But a, if a lot of people would realize that it takes two, one, two. I'm not a, an attorney, but I believe that either parent should always have access to a child. And I believe the attorney would say this, if, even if I was in prison right now, I would still be able to have visitation to my child if I work it out to where she could bring him up to the, the prison or whatever is going on. Yeah. Dimitri, can you repeat the question? If I can't see my child, I shouldn't have to pay child support. True or false? That's like a, a open ended question to me because that could go both ways. If he's not paying, then I'm not going to let you see your child. 
and I think it's BS both ways. I mean, you still are a parent, so you still need to handle your financial obligation. You see what I'm saying? But the moms who, oh, he's not paying, I'm not letting him see his kids. That's not right either. So I, I, I think that you still should be able to see your child. You should, still should force the issue, even if you can't pay. I mean, if you can't pay, you still should be able to see your baby because it's it's about relationships. It, it shouldn't be about money. So let's hear from your attorney. So once again, I think it's important that our followers or the people who's watching this tonight understand the dominating law when it comes to child support, possession and access of a child. And that's going to be the Texas Family Code. In the Texas Family Code, the, the theory of the whole Texas Family Code for children is what's in the best interest of the child. And when we have child support and child custody, a lot of people, when they come into my office, let's say, for example, for a divorce, I have to let them know there's a difference. There's the divorce, there's the property division, there's child support, and then there's child uh, custody. How are you going to be visiting with your child? Visitation and custody do not go in hand. Well, sometimes they can go hand in hand, depending on how who's having the child the longest, which is going to determine who's going to be able to receive child support. But they don't go hand in hand when we say, oh, he's not paying child support. So because he's not paying child support, he cannot see his child. That is incorrect. A mother or a father who is denying a parent access and visitation to a child has remedies in court. You can file an enforcement against that parent to have them held in contempt of a court order to go to jail to pay a fine. And you can also get additional time, which is called makeup time, to make up for that visitation that you lost. I don't think it's right for any parent to deny another parent uh, possession and access of their child because they're unable to pay child support. There are remedies for your child support and there's remedies for your possession and access. Okay, so somebody wants to know how um, can a non-custodial parent or the father, whoever it is, because it could be moms or dads, uh, get custody or some custody of their child if they don't have any currently? And so I asked that to our attorney. That's a very great question. Um, if you're trying to get custody of your child, it's important that you have some type of court order in place because if there's no court order in place, Mom can do whatever she wants to do with the child. Dad can do whatever he wants to do with the child. And if you call the police, they're not going to do anything because there's no court order to say who's supposed to have the child when. So it's important that you do get a court order. How do you do that? In the state of Texas, you must file a suit affecting the parent-child relationship. Attorneys call it a SAPSA. This determines Who's going to be the primary caregiver? In the state of Texas, it's presumed to be in the best interest of the child for the parents to have joint managing conservatorship, which means both parents have equal rights to that child, unless there's evidence of something different. All right. So you want to file a suit affecting the parent child relationship in that suit affecting the parent child relationship. We're going to determine who's going to be primary, who's going to have possession and access, which is the possessory conservator. Right. Who's going to be paying child support and what amounts? Who's going to be providing medical for that child and any extra things that relate to the child and parent relationship? Um, so the suit affecting the parent child relationship is what you want to file in court um, to get custody and to get something on the books so that if a parent is denying you access, you have a type of remedy in court to get you the relationship with your child. All right. And you guys, I'm, I, I hope that you guys are um, writing some of this stuff down because um, you're very fortunate to have a, a very knowledgeable attorney on answering your question. But most people ain't going to do it without a retainer fee. So exactly. you're, getting a, you're getting a free consultation. Right. And we appreciate it so much. So I'm going to ask um, Gary and Donovan's opinion. Then I'm going to go to our attorney. Um, so who should be so should the uh, parent that's paying child support? be able to claim the child on their taxes as well? How, how would that work? So let's start with you, Gary, and then we'll go to our three last. I think, I think if you if you are splitting the cost of, you know, what it takes to take care of the child, that, that should be alternated from year to year. It, it realistically should be alternated. See, I don't have long answers for this because tonight I'm going to be the ghetto dude in the room because I, I got a bunch of hood cats watching me. So I, I just think if I'm paying my child support, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. 
coming through with my visitations and especially if i'm paying what i need to pay we should alternate you know putting a child on the tax return from year to year one year i got her the next year you got her. donovan yeah um in my experience um I'm, I'm with Gary, you know, it should be alternated. But in my experience, I didn't really need to uh, file the, you know, the, you know, for myself. So I let her do it uh, most of the time, which actually gave me a break. But I'm talking about uh, the child that is not through the court system. Now, the one that's in the court system, I let her have that as well because, uh, you know, I didn't want to deal with it. I just was doing what I had to do. You go ahead and file it. I don't want to go through the problems of just dealing with it. But uh, I have a question for the attorney when we get around to it. So let me know. All right. Now we'll, we'll get the real answer from our attorney. <laughs> <laughs> the real answer. <laughs> um, so it's important to know the dominating law for uh, credit on your tax return. So Texas law has nothing to do with who's able to claim a child on um, their taxes. That's governed by the federal law. And the dominating law for that is going to be um, the Internal Revenue Code, right? And so simply put, the Internal Revenue Code says the parent who has the child the greatest amount of time is the parent who is obligated and allowed to carry the child um, on their taxes. However, parents can come to an agreement where one parent takes the child one year and another parent takes the child another year. But this has to be an agreement with the parents. It's not going to be put into an order just because you mentioned it. It has to be an agreement because the federal law says the parent who has the child the greatest amount of time is obligated and allowed to carry the child on their tax returns. Now, I don't know if followers are able to see the link that I just posted, but I did write an article about this on my website, DeronLawFirm.com, um, explaining what the law is and, you know, who's supposed to be carrying the child, which goes to the new stimulus uh, check, right? Who's going to be able to receive that? Um, if you are in arrears, right, if you owe child support, that stimulus check, income tax, any personal injury settlements is going to be intercepted and applied towards your arrears. So, yeah, that the federal government has a, a huge hand in, you know, what's going to happen with your taxes. All right, and we'll keep the question uh, to you. So someone wants to know, um, where should a parent who doesn't have custody and their child is in a different state, where should they go about filing for custody? So should it be in their state or the state that the child actually lives in? So there's a uniform family code that helps us understand where certain filings need to be made. In the state of Texas, well, anywhere, honestly, it's going to be in the county in which the child resides. So if the child is residing in Texas and Harris County, then you're going to file your suit in Texas or Harris County. However, it's important to know if there has been a prior order issued, then that court has continuing jurisdiction over that child until there has been a motion to transfer uh, filed and granted. So if, for example, my child lives in Harris County and we move to Bell County. Um, if I'm filing anything related to my child, I have to file it in Harris County unless I file a motion to change venue to Bell County. Now, Bell County would technically be able to hear it, but because it was filed in Harris County initially, they would have continuous jurisdiction. So where, what the county in which the child was at. Okay, so I have another question, and this happens to people a lot, and I want all of your opinions. Someone wants to talk about cash as a gift. A lot of times we know the non-custodial parent might say, well, here's $200, buy the child some clothes or something like that. Should that be considered a gift? Or it even a lot of times people have receipts and they say they be in the system, well, it's still a gift. So I'm going to get uh, Gary, then Donovan, and then our attorney. So uh, should it be a gift? Like, uh, wh what are your uh, uh, thoughts about that? Let me tell you how I work in the hood with the cats, you know, that, that I know live in the hood. They go and they give these gifts. And the woman at, the, at that point, she takes it as if it's support. She's just going to take it. She's not going to say if it's a gift or not. There's no clarification. So for me... I, I think it needs to stay the way that it is. 
you know, just pay your money to them people and be done with it. Because, you know, giving gifts is not going to, you know, help you in the long run. Because when you go to court, they're not looking at none of them gifts. It's a sad situation, but they're not looking at none of them gifts. Now, if I decide I just want to do something, you know, I'm going to do it. And I don't care if it's a gift or if it's not counted, counted, whatever. But I mean, I, I kind of like to stick to the way that the laws are written to protect myself. Uh, totally agree. Um, and, you know, all this stuff right now is bringing back nightmares of, you know, me going through the system. Now that I'm out and I kind of know how the system works, a lot of things that, that we're bringing up, you know, either I've heard it or I've experienced it myself within the court system. So this is a great topic. But again, from what I've learned, give them what is stipulated in your agreement through the courts. Anything else is a gift. But you wouldn't know that if you're just, you don't follow the summons, you don't show up for court. You know, you're not going to know these things. You're thinking, oh, I, hey, I got all this. I got all this other stuff. Now, here in California, there was a case where a guy, he was uh, giving the girl like $200 or something, you know, for like four or five years. And, you know, they were having a little relationship. And then, of course, mad day came and he shows up to court. He's four or five years behind in child support because she had just filed it, but she filed for the back child support. He showed whatever receipts he had. They gave him no credit, no credit. They said it's a gift, but he wouldn't know that because he doesn't know the law. So. Now we'll have the real answer. Okay, can you hear me? Perfect. So, guys, like, seriously, it's so important that you read your child support order and you understand what's in your child support order. Most orders, orders that I draft, orders that the Office of the Attorney General draft, it's going to have language in there that says anything outside of this what you're ordered to pay, if it's not paid by the way, in the way that we've asked you to pay it through the office of the attorney general, it's going to be considered a gift and you're not going to get a credit towards your child support. So I always advise my client, if you want to give extra money, perfectly fine. Pay it directly through the office of the attorney general. So that's counted towards your child support that you owe. So if one time you get into a bind, you're not able to pay child support, you have money that you've actually been paying into your child support account and you don't run into these issues. But never, never, never give a mom money in lieu of child support unless you're really willing to just give that money to her because you're absolutely correct. It is going to be considered a gift. Yeah. Now, I tried to pull the language up to share on my screen, but I don't want to do that and mess up anything. But if you read your order, it, it says it in there. Anything outside of this is going to be considered a gift and gifts are not going to be counted towards child support. Now, if you don't have an order and you're giving money, it's very important that you keep those receipts because when we talk about retroactive child support, in the state of Texas, we can go back four years, okay? We can go back. It, it is considered to be in the best interest of the child to go back four years from the time that you were not taking care of your child. So if you have receipts and you have a um, cash app log or a Zelle log or something like that to say, no, actually, I've been giving her money for my child, then you will get credit in the state of Texas. I'm not licensed in California. So I can't speak to California law, but in the state of Texas, if you're providing actual care and support for the child and you're able to evidence that in court, you will get credit for it. All right. So again, I hope you all are taking notes. And so someone, and I'm going to try to paraphrase it because I read it. It was long, but basically sounds like uh, he says he's $30,000 behind in child support. He hasn't been able to make regular payments due to being sick or taking care of sick parents. It's just a whole host of things. Life happens, right? And so he's also not able to see his child. So he wants to know what can he do? The mom is not working with them uh, in regards to the, uh, 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 what do you call it, arrears and all of that. So what can he do or if anything, what, what can he do? Once again, great question. Like we mentioned earlier, child support and possession and access are two separate things. 
I hate when moms try to use that as a way to manipulate dads and try to use that to not allow them to see their children. Because honestly and truly, what you're doing is creating a wedge between mom, I mean, dad and, and the child, right? Um, so if that is happening to you, um, you can file a motion for enforcement in court so that you're able to see your child. Once again, mom could be on the hook for contempt, which is if a contempt is found, she can go to jail. She can um, get a fine and, you know, she can pay your attorney fee. Then you can get makeup time for the days that you miss. Now, if you are in arrears, you want and you can't afford your child support at this time, you need to file a modification of your child support so that it reflects what you're making now. A lot of times people two years ago, you were working a really good job. During COVID-19, I told all my clients, if you're not working anymore, if you don't, if you're getting less hours, tell me and we're gonna file a modification, right? Because child support goes on what you're making, not what you were making or what you have, you know, to make later on down the line. It's what you're making right now. So I would advise that person to file a motion uh, for enforcement and file a modification um, so that he can get his child support reduced and address those arrears so that he can get a monthly amount that he's paying towards his arrears so that it's not so damning when he goes to court. All right, and I wanna also say to you guys, um, this advice is free. I mean, it is just like, you can't get better advice, okay? So if you're having some issues, please reach out to her and you know her business and 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 have her represent you. Of course, you want to pay her. <laughs> reach out to her. Um, so okay, and, I, and I'll keep the questioning with you, um, attorney. So someone said that they are not; their payments are done. The child is grown, but the uh, the case is still active. What does that mean exactly, and how can they close it? I guess. The case is probably still active because this person has arrears that have not been paid up. So child support in the state of Texas stops at the age of 18 when a child graduates high school. It's done. However, if you owe money to the state, uh, maybe your maybe mom was on TANF, maybe mom received some medical assistance through assistance through the state of Texas and you still owe money to them, you'll continue to pay. And if you owe arrears, you will still be paying child support until that arrears amount is closed out on. So there's nothing you can do but pay your balance. Dude. Sorry, uh, <laughs> wrong button. Okay, so the next question um, is, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll start with you, Gary. We'll go to Donovan, then we'll go to our attorney here. Shy, let me add. Let me add. If if you have a good relationship with the obligee, the person who is getting child support, what you can do is uh, file a a form with the office of the attorney. If this is money owed directly to the parent, right? This is not money that's owed to the state of Texas. You can do a credit form, and basically, she can waive out that amount of child support. Now, you know you got to have a good relationship with her because the money. If it's not owed to the state of Texas, that becomes a civil judgment against you for her as the petitioner. And you will owe her that money directly. But she can waive off that money if you guys are, you know, in agreement. OK. All right. Awesome. So uh, the next question is, uh, Gary, I'll start with you, Donovan. Then we'll go to our attorney. If one goes to jail, should the payment stop? Do we make money when we in jail? In the state of California, you can get a good paying job on the yard for about 12 cents an hour. Your check can be $12 a month. If you want it, you can have it. Common sense tells me that if he go to jail, just let it go until he get out. Just let it go. See, but that's the vindictiveness of some people. They don't want to fight for legislation to change. Oh, he need to pay it. What I'm gonna pay it with? Commissary? What I'm gonna pay it with? No, they shouldn't have to pay. Uh, totally in agreement. If you're incarcerated, how are you supposed to work? I mean, it doesn't even make sense. I know that they do it to get uh, father's attention, but to suspend a person's license so he can't go to a job, now you've cost me my job because I can't go. So again, we need to, 
we need child support. There's no doubt about that. But we have to make these laws common sense and make it make sense. So it's beneficial to the child and to both parents. And to you. So I don't know if you guys, man, y'all are really getting like some free. My hourly rate is like 285 and y'all are getting like, okay. So I don't know if they just got this message, but I did another article about this particular subject. If you are in, like guys, it drives me crazy because this is your responsibility. When you go to jail, you know your ass was paying child support. It doesn't magically fucking go away. Like, you know you were paying child support. So what you can do is contact the office of the attorney general. Every TDCJ has a form. And if you don't have that form, ask your mama, ask your daddy, ask your cousin to go to deronlawfirm.com and go to the article and print out the form for you to let them know, hey, I'm incarcerated. I'm not working. I can't pay child support so that they can reduce or suspend the amount of your child support until you return. It is your responsibility. These fathers, these mothers, these obligors are not dumb. So it, it blows my mind when they say, oh, they're taking advantage. Oh, they knew I was in jail. You can get it modified. All you got to do is do the fucking work. Well, well, here's the thing that, that I'm going to kind of go left on you with a little bit. I show up at child support. I ain't been paying my child support. The man tell me, you finna go to jail for 180 days. They put the cuffs on me. The mama know I'm in jail. The judge know I'm in jail. This is why I'm saying we need some legislative change because it's not making sense. I understand what you're saying, what we have to do right now. But the average dude that go to child support court and ain't paid if he get the wrong judge, he going to jail right then. So it's not like they don't know he in jail. But I, th like I say, if you can get a good paying job in jail, and, and if it was me, I tell that baby mama, make it happen with that twelve dollars every month. Right. Uh, real, 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 real quick. Somebody had a really good question. Like right now, a lot of people are out of work and they can't pay, and the courts are closed. What do I do then? Once again, Lord, this is why I say it's not child support. It's not the office of the attorney general. Yes, there can be some legislative changes done, but the problem is lack of knowledge. First of all, the courts are not closed. I still go to court and have virtual hearings in court on family matters, and you can still file things in court. Listen, if you are filing a modification today, absolutely, it's not gonna get approved tomorrow, right? However, when you go before that judge, it's going to be retroactive. So from the date that you filed is what your child support is going to be. If you're making $5 an hour, then the judge is going to render a verdict based on your $5 hour a job. And you're going to get it retroactive from the date that you filed. The courts are not closed. You can still file. You can still file. That's misinformation that's going out there. The courts are not closed. All right. So, and and um, Larry, is there a way we could put her website up uh, for people to uh, be able to contact her on the uh, on the screen here? Is there a way we can do that? We'd have oh. to send it over to me in an inbox, and I can get it up. Okay. Yeah, because we want we want you um, to get some business from this because we got to get a lot of business. Yeah, because you give it a game away. All right. She, well, well, can I say something? Sure. Go ahead. I I I, I think when I speak of legislation. When a man goes to court and he's wrongly, wrongfully convicted of something and he goes to jail and 20 years later, they find out he didn't do it. You know, they let him out of jail. If everything works the right way, he gets to sue the state of Texas. He gets money for being wrongfully convicted. There are a lot of guys that are paying child support for kids that are not theirs. And these women know these kids are not theirs. And then 14, 15 years later, they find out this is where I'm saying there needs to be some legislation, because at that point, if you knew it wasn't his child and you made him pay all it, think about it. When they pay all that money, we don't get it back. We don't get a dime of it back. I think legislation and, and I'm telling you, all I'm calling the state rep when we get off the, off this video that there needs to be a new law put in place 
that these slick mamas with these games, you either go to jail or paying back every dollar that you took from them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. You know what? I see some things like that. And let me tell you, you as a father, you have a right to get a DNA test before you sign a birth certificate, before you sign an acknowledgement of paternity. You have a right at any point to file, if you have any question in your mind, to file, uh, I mean, to get a DNA test and request a paternity test. So, I mean, yes, we have moms out there who are vindictive and, and, and just nasty. And there are those situations where it's really messed up. But at the end of the day, I would hope that you know what type of woman you're laying down with. Because if you do, you you would know that maybe you do need to get a DNA test. I know a lot of men that come to my office and, and I'm looking at the women and they're telling me the stories about the things that they've done and the type of person that they are. And I'm like, so you didn't know this to begin with? You knew. You knew what type of woman this was. But I do agree with you when there is a situation you have to understand that criminal law and civil law are two totally different things, right? We're talking money and we're talking life. We're talking liberty, right? So these are two separate and different things. And even with criminal cases, because I do practice a little criminal law as well, that element of knowing you have to know or should have known is a very, very, very hard, element of a case to prove that's why a lot of these prosecutors who do some shady shit and shady things with these cases it's hard to prosecute them because that element of if they knew or should have known is hard to prove the only person who knew or should have known is the person who did it themselves and so i i, I see what you're saying and i really do agree with it and if there's any fathers out here that got kind of jip, jipped and juked on that i you know i'm sorry but you knew what type of baby mama you was dealing with. But here's my thing. It's called a level of trust. The same way women complain about <clears throat> prenups. Oh, if you love me, I don't need a prenup. Well, some guys feel, I love her. I knew she didn't cheat on me. So when the baby comes, they just sign the birth certificate. So my problem with it is, is there are some people, because they have that gullible dude that believes that that's his child, Knowing he's not going to sign it, know that that child is not for him. I know that because I have a cousin that did it three times. Well, you need to get a test at CVS and Walmart. I'm not with it. I don't really like this argument because if you if there's any question in your mind that this child is not yours, DNA tests, tests are just available on the show. I can go buy one right now if I wanted to. What, what I'm well, saying I is there are certain situations, and then I'm going to leave this alone. If I'm married to you, why need a DNA test? Now that's another that's that's another problem. In the state of Texas, if you and I are married, you are presumed to um, be the father unless a DNA test says otherwise. So that is, you know, something that's in the law that's kind of shady. I mean, but not really because if I'm married to you, there's no thought that I'm cheating on you. We are a union, we're an institution. And so that should be your child. I have a case that I'm dealing with right now. Uh, I'm representing dad, but mom was married at the time of conception with his child. And we had to get dad to sign off on sign off on an AOP, acknowledgement of paternity, because he's not the father. But because the law says, if you and I are married, any child born during that marriage, you are the presumed father. So, I mean, but there's also ways around it. There's a presumed father and an acknowledged father and an adjudicated father, which means there has been some type of filing in court. We've had a, a court order DNA test and we know that you are the father. Presumed is just based on law. You and I are married. And so we're going to presume that you are the father. And then we have, have those acknowledged fathers, acknowledged paternity is those fathers who just sign off on birth certificates just because they feel like, you know, they are the father. But if you're well, not just, married, the young guys, if you are not, my legal advice, if you are not married, I don't care who it upsets. If you are not married, or even if you are married, if you dealing with a shady wife, if you are not married, for sure, DNA test before signing off on anything, period, the end. I don't care. I don't, 
you know, if it pisses them off, so what? DNA tests before signing off on anything because the situation that you speak on is very, very common. Okay, well, well let me ask you this question real quick. Let me, this, um, let me just say this real quick, two, 10 seconds. I just recommend to the young guys out there that's listening to this, have sex at CVS so that you can get your condoms and your DNA test all at the same time. <laughs> all at the same time. Um, and for but, but, whoever is wondering, um, I wonder if the attorney has a son. Absolutely, I do have a son. I have an active child support case, and I represent myself in that case. So, yes, I do have a son, and I am very much aware of what goes on in court. Right. Um, well, let me ask you this question in regards to uh, the military, because uh, I had a lot of troops that would come and they are being told that they're the father of this child, and the courts tells them you got so many days to prove your paternity. These guys are deployed to Afghanistan and all these other situations. Then they come back. I mean, you're a, mil you're a young military guy. You don't have a lot of money for attorneys and, and stuff like that. At the end of the day, he is presumed to be the legal father and he should continue to pay. I mean, what do you do in a situation like that when you got women that are putting children on guys that can't defend themselves? They can't go get a paternity test. They, they can't walk into court because they're, it was even in the news uh, during uh, the initial Gulf War, this guy was in a sub and the uh, court in Michigan ordered him to be there within two weeks. And the military said, this guy is in a sub. He's not coming back for six months. He's not even gonna come up to surface. Dogged him in court. Okay, so the question, the legal aspect of that is, you say that he was the presumed father. You have to be specific in your terminology because for me as an attorney, presumed father means that he was married to this woman. Is that not correct? Yes. He was married to this person. Mm -hmm. So if you're married to this person, unless there's a petition for divorce or something, child support in the state of Texas, child support orders go away when you're married. They don't right. exist. And so I don't understand how he was paying like that doesn't happen in the state of Texas. Well, what I'm because saying if is somebody, if, 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 if you and I had a child, right. And then I put you on child support and two years later we get married. Guess what happens to that child support? Order? Gone. It's no longer, it no longer exists. Okay. Now there's another thing that people need to understand. And I'm, this is Michigan that you're speaking of. I'm speaking of Texas. Right, we protect our service members. There's a service member act. No order can be signed while someone is on active duty, period. If they're not there and we know that they're, they're military or it comes back that they were in military, guess what? That order is void. It does not exist anymore. So I don't know what's going on in Michigan, but in the state of Texas, that does not happen. And if it does happen, there's a remedy for that. If they can prove that they were on active duty. Well, let me let me ask a question from the hood because I'm getting the inboxes too. Well, what about the, the, the slick mom that, that's living in the house with the man, no eat out, file child support on him just so they can get the free services from the state? That happened to my brother-in-law for 20 years. I told him, you crazy, because ain't no way I'm going to pay child support for some kids I'm living in the house with, just so she could get Medicaid. Well, you have to ask what type of baby mama you have and what type of father you're dealing with, right? Because That was a thought. That was a thought. Well, I mean, there you go. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> I can't answer that. <laughs> See, man, I'm talking about this legislation, man. I'm going to Austin. I'm going to fight for some of these dudes, man. Because this this go on every day. Our mother. They, they want the food stamps. They want the food stamps, the welfare. They, but they can't get it because Let's you got this, this dude in the house and you put him on child support knowing he live in the house with the kids. Let's keep it real, Gary, because I appreciate that comment. And I want everyone to know you're seeing this nice licensed attorney now, but I'm from the hood too, okay? We we cut from the same cloth. Been there, done that, and was on TANF, temporary assistance for needy families. Been there, right? 
when you file that application, there is a requirement that the father is placed on child support. Why is that? Because there's a, that says if you are depending on the state to take care of you, why are you not depending on the father to take care of your children? So I don't feel like there's a problem with that. If you are asking the state if you are asking the state to help you and the father is not helping you, what is the where is the disconnect? There's a problem with that. We know why they do it. So I'm gonna um wow that was ooh I think we asked the wrong question. <laughs> All right, so we might be getting into some deeper waters here. Really quick from all of you, true or false, it is disrespectful to ask for a DNA test. Hell no. 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 That's, I saw somebody make that comment, so I just wanted to, I, I kind of felt like everybody was going to say no. <laughs> If you're not, with, this, a, as a, you're not with a 24-7, get a DNA test. As a mother, let me tell you this. As a mother, so I, I got pregnant at 17. Um, and there was a question from the father of my child, like, I'm, oh, I'm just get a DNA test. It hurt to have that asked to me because you know what type of woman you are. You're like, how dare you? Like, I know what type of woman I am. However, at the end of the day, there's no question in my mind who my son belongs to. So if you don't have anything to worry about, then that should be, it shouldn't be a problem for you. But if you're a shady, vindictive thought out here doing all this extra stuff, then I can see how it would be disrespectful. Mm -hmm. You know, it hurts to have someone ask you that, but it's not necessarily disrespectful. And the people who take it as disrespectful are probably people who you want to get a DNA test from. Well, Alana, Alana says, y'all know darn well that's disrespectful. Gary Monroe says, I'm a disrespectful Good in. All right, so let's move it along here. Okay. So most deaf, um, one of the, the best rappers on the planet. I, I love me so most deaf, but that's neither here or there. Mm -hmm. He actually moved to South Africa for a while because mm -hmm. He said the child support system in America is just, it's its crap for fathers. Because he said every time he got a new movie role or an album came out, the, the hits, you know, baby mamas took him back to court and wanted more money. So my question is how, and I'll ask our attorney first, how um, do modifications work? And how are they supposed to work? And is it fair? And I ask, so fellas, I'm going to ask you guys that question. So keep that in mind. Is it fair every time you get a raise or the other, the, it could be the mom too. Is it fair every time you get a raise that she should be able to haul you back in court? And so how does a modification work? Listen, Gary, I know you hate to hear it, but in the state of Texas for child support, we are the best state to be put on child support in. You know why? There is a cap in the state of Texas on how much child support a person can get. Do you know Chris Brown's original child support order was in the state of Texas and there was a cap. It is 20% of your net resources up to $9,220. So it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire or a broke nigga on the street. I'm sorry. There is a cap on the amount of child support a person can receive. Now, a court can deviate from that statutory guideline if there's a proven need of the child. So say for instance, let's take Chris Brown or Most Delph or whomever, and this child requires to be flown out, you know, to go see their, their parent. They require private schooling. They require security when they're out. Those are additional expenses that a normal child would not have. And so the court can deviate a little bit from that statutory guideline. But in the state of Texas, the most you'll pay is $1,920 unless there's some proven needs beyond what is considered to be in the best interest of a child. So I hate when people say, oh, baby mama's getting rich off of uh, child support. It's not that serious. Can't nobody get rich off of $1,920. My rent alone is that much. Donovan? 
Well, I should have moved to Texas a long time ago because California ain't having it. <laughs> California ain't having it. California, if you want to get rich, if you want to get rich, take your baby and move to California. Ain't no caps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, every time I got a promotion, so did she. And I mean, it really, it, it really, you know, it doesn't give you incentive to continue working or continue to do what you got to do. So, you know, I don't think it's fair. But like I said, I live in California, so it is what it is. If I had known that Texas was like that, I would have been I would have set up residency when I retired over there. Gary. I don't really, you know, me. When it comes to taxes, I'm on a 1099. And I'm only make what I make. So if you're looking to get rich off me, you're wasting your time. You came in the dough getting the dick. You gonna go out the dough getting the and my pocket's gonna stay the same. Oh my God. Go ahead. Well, let me just add to that. Once again, um, the Texas Family Code, um, because someone asked about modifications, right? So the Texas Family Code basically says the only way that you can get an increase or a decrease in child support is if your the statutory guideline or whatever method you're using to calculate a uh, child support for me in my office it would be you know the statutory guideline 20 percent of the net resources so you can get a modification if that amount changes by 20 percent or a hundred dollars so if you get a decrease if, if your amount if you calculate your child support and it decreases or increases by 20 percent or a hundred dollars you can get a modification on child support all right, so let's uh, go to the uh, issue of alienation of affection. So um, there's a lot of, and I think uh, Gary and Donovan both have a story of alienation of affection to where the child um, was poisoned or tainted um, in regards to how they felt about their father. Basically, the mother uh, told them stories that wasn't true and you know made the children, I guess, dislike them for a lack of better words. So we'll start with the attorney first. Can you tell people uh, what that means and, and how the courts look upon alienation of affection? And then fellas, tell your story briefly of um, what, what that looks like for you and then ultimately what that looks like for the child. <sighs> Alienation is a big thing in child custody cases, not necessarily child support. Um, and we see that when one parent um, is pretty much, it's a psych psychological thing, right? With the child where they're telling the child that the daddy ain't no good, that they're, you know, not allowing them to see the father. It's, it's a multiple, it's multiple factors that you can get um, to show that there's some alienation of the child. So saying negative things about the other parent to the child, not allowing the other parent to see the child, uh, you know, just kind of uh, making that parent not be a part of that child's life, not placing them or not letting them know what the child is doing if they're in extracurricular activities, not placing them as an emergency contact or something like that. Um, that's where we see alienation. And we use that a lot when we're attempting to change primary conservatorship over the child because remember texas family code says what's in the best interest of the child so if you're alienating um a parent from the child it may be in the best interest for that other parent to have a uh, primary conservatorship over that child so that the other parent can have a continuing healthy relationship with the alienated parent gary let's start with you I see it all the time. I, I see the games that are played. You know, I'm a hold them, hold a kid because you ain't paying your child support. Or, you know, some people pay their child support and you just have an ignorant co parent. I, I'm going to speak to it in this manner that we all report to a higher power. We all do. And eventually, you're going to have to stand in judgment with that higher power for the things that you did. I think that boys need to be in their father's lives because they have to teach them how to be men. I think the girls need to be in their father's lives because girls tend to grab, gravitate to their fathers. You know what I'm saying? How do you expect her to learn how to be treated as a young lady 
if you won't allow her father to show her. That's all it boils down to with me. I don't, I don't, I mean, whatever we've been through, we've been through. Now it's time to, if you can repair, you can repair. And I just think time has a way of catching up with people. And whatever that situation that kept you separated from your kids, whether it's man or woman, you got to remember when they get old enough, they'll reach out and they'll try to figure it out. There's going to come a time when you have to answer. So you, you may answer before you die, but you definitely will answer when it's time for judgment. Sure, absolutely. Uh, in my situation, like I said it was a, a very sad situation. I had a young impression. Uh, had a Desert Storm baby when I came back from Desert Storm. And, uh, as you know, military, you're going to pay your money. I went through the child support system on my first child. So I'm getting uh, money take garnished out of my check. So, you know, paid the money faithfully. She got default judgments against me while I'm overseas. Didn't worry about it because, you know, money's money. Didn't really care about it. So I'm flying. I'm a pilot at this time. I'm flying in and out, going through country to country, doing what I got to do. Can't be there all the time, child, because I'm serving the country, which is what my father did to me. My father was an aviator as well. So to me, that's normal. That's the lifestyle that I live. I come back. He's a senior in high school. We sit down and he's asking me those questions. Hey, dad, why aren't you here all the time? Why do you keep doing this stuff? Mom says you're a deadbeat. Uh, mom said you didn't pay no child support. Showed him the paper that said zero. Mom tells him. Oh, that's a fake paper. I said, whatever you believe, call this number. It is what it is. I just said, look, I'm in the military. You can't serve a military career without paying child support. That just doesn't happen. Blew my child's mind away. Haven't really talked to him in like eight years. And it's just, it's just a telling story that you got like a lot of these women will do this stuff. And, you know, a lot of people say that I, I shouldn't be bitter. OK, I didn't do anything for this woman to turn my child against me the way she did. Now, I know I'm joking when I say this, but no, if I would have, <laughs> yeah, if I see it. this woman have so much rage, because if, if you feel, you know, if they feel that I'm a dirtbag or whatever, that's between me and her. Why does he have to know that kind of stuff? And people don't understand why I get enraged if I ever saw this woman in my presence, because. What she did to my child is, is, is you got the money. You had the money, all the money you wanted. Didn't, didn't contest it or nothing. And you did this to my relationship with the child. And that, that's my horror story. But as I matured my younger child, I made sure I didn't go through no court systems. I didn't need no lawyer, none of that stuff. So I learned from you know, my previous mistakes. But a lot of women do that. And it's, it's really unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. Somebody raised the uh, issue of holidays. I just want to ask a, a basic question. Why do you all think um, that's such a fight when it comes to the holidays or the child's birthday even? What, what, like, what's going on with that? Well, I, like I said in the beginning, man, I mean, whether it's holidays or taxes, let's just be fair and alternate them. I mean, this Christmas, they go to your house. Next Christmas, they come to mine. That's just being fair. I mean, when you're an adult, that that is the best way to come up with the resolution to uh to that problem. It's not a big issue to me because I understand it. But I mean, what stops you from going visit your child at mom's house if she allows you on the holiday? Nothing. Um, so if you have a standard possession order in the state of Tennessee, you're absolutely right, Gary. You have alternating holidays. I don't know who this is. I don't know who this is making me it. Yeah, mute their microphones. Okay. I okay. think okay. Yeah, that's better. Um, so if you have a standard possession order, you are alternating holidays. One parent will have the child on even years and one parent will have the child on um, odd years. So that is something that is in um, the standard possession order. 
I always recommend that you at least get a consultation with an attorney before you go into the office of the attorney general's office, because a lot of this stuff that they draft up is standard. And if you don't know what standard is, you don't know what you're signing up for. And you can deviate in the state of Texas. You don't have to go by a standard possession order. You can come to some type of agreement with mom or with dad on something that that is not standard. I have a client who's a firefighter and because of his schedule, he can't exercise the first, the third, the fifth weekend. It just does not work for him. So what we did was with 30 days notice, he can elect which weekends he wants so that he has con a continuous relationship with his child. If holidays or if birthdays are a problem, you guys, you just need to sit down and think of what is fair. What is in the best interest of the child? Because it's not fair for one parent to always have the, this child on a particular holiday. It's not fair for one parent to have this child every birthday or every time it's their birthday. It's, it's not fair. It's not in the best interest of the child. It doesn't help to create a continuing healthy relationship with the other parent. And so if that is an issue, at least get a consultation with an attorney so they can give you ideas on how to handle yourself with the office of the attorney general um, so that they can formulate a customized order that works best for your family. And don't feel forced into an agreement either. A lot of courts require you to go to mediation before there's a final hearing on the matter. 90% of my cases are handled in mediation. So maybe we don't agree now, but if we sit down in mediation and really discuss what the real issues are, what the real problems are, and we have a mediator who understands the jurisdiction in which they're practicing, right? They understand Harris County or Milam County or Bell County, or whatever county you are in, and they understand what type of judge you're going before. They can kind of guide you and tell you, hey, if you take this to court, this probably is not going to work out in your best interest. You can believe me or not, but I'm, I'm here to really help you guys formulate a customized plan that works for you and your family. And that's another thing. In mediation, you get to determine what's in the best interest of your family. You don't, there's not a judge who can tell you this is what's going to happen. You and mom or you and dad get to sit down and say, hey, we know our family better than anybody. We know that you know what this holiday is Hanukkah is a huge holiday for us, but the judge doesn't know that. They didn't know that oh, my grandma died on June 1st. And so that's a big thing in my family. And so it's very important that I have my child on this day, even though in the standard possession order, it's not a day that I'm supposed to have. You can manipulate and customize an order that works for you. And I don't think a lot of parents understand that when they go through the AG's office, they see the standard possession order and they think that's an end all be all when it is not. Okay. And so, um, and I see a comment, um, Al, he says, if you have an awesome relationship with the parent, you won't have any issues. I wholeheartedly agree, uh, but that's probably rare nowadays for whatever reason. And so um, this is kind of going off the cuff. Um, and then um, we have a new guest. Well, um, what is your name? I don't think he can hear me. So uh, he, can, he can't hear. So, okay, so um, someone said, a woman has six kids and has been on the system, right? When is she going to be held accountable? I know I really have a lot to do with child support. Never. I guess the the person is probably wondering, well, the father is held accountable. Why isn't a mother who has six kids, you know, and is relying on the system for um, you know, for for assistance? How come she's not held accountable? So maybe um, our attorney can answer that one. And then everyone else can chime in. I don't know why that's a question. I don't understand the purpose of that question. Um, she has a right, a constitutional right to have as many kids as she can have. Um, and those fathers who are impregnating her have an obligation and a duty to take care of their children. So, the question can be, why is a man continually, continuously having sex with a woman who has multiple kids if he doesn't want to be responsible for those children? I don't understand that question. I don't know why that's a question. 
I'll tell you what, if I see a woman that has like multiple baby dads, I run the other way. I mean, That's the red flag. That's the red <laughs> All right. And uh, Gary, what is our guest, our new guest name? Okay, we can't hear you. So hello, hello there. Can you hear me? I, I can hello hear you there. Uh, it's Lanisha's husband. Yeah, well, what's your name? Yes, we hear you. Yes, we hear you. This is Stacy. Stacy. Husband. Last night. Stacy. So, yeah, we're, 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 having, we're having just a little bit of this. What with you last night? I, I remember you wanted your name, but we never got your name, but we're having a little bit of this. Oh, okay. But go ahead. Oh, okay. So what did you want to add? So what did you want to add? Oh, I was just letting you know who I was. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so sit right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so sit down. All right, so um, let's see, uh, Gary. We can't hear you. I'm gonna step up for the ladies right now. Which one of y'all big mamas didn't have 12, 13 kids? What's so wrong with a woman having a bunch of kids? See, let me tell you what I do. When I walk through the door, cause look like every wife I've had, had kids already. When I walked through the door, they became my kids and I didn't care how many was in the house. See, you wanna be a man when you're getting the pudding, but you don't wanna be a man when it's time to take care of all the responsibilities. That's I'm right, being, you better I'm, speak. I'm just being 100 yeah. with it. So if you walk up in there, see, remember that night you grabbed out the club? I bet you didn't ask her how many kids she had then. Then remember when you took her home and, and looked like the house was dark and all the kids were asleep? And then when you woke up the next morning with seven of them running around? Welcome to the hood, homie. Welcome to being a man. If you can be a man and go get the cat, you can be a man and go get the bag. That's right. You better speak. You better speak. <laughs> and then what about these men who have multiple baby baby mamas, who have six and seven and eight kids? What about them? Why isn't the system holding them responsible? So that is just a messed up question. Well, they, the system isn't holding them responsible because I still love him. I can change him. I'm going to be the one. You know how it goes. Come on. You know, we do want to be the one to change him. We do. <laughs> <laughs> he had a dog who just didn't meet me yet. <laughs> okay, so let me say this. Uh, someone says, Black women have learned what the state will do for her mainly uh, to keep the man away. Let me tell you, listen, there's judges watching this live right now on my stream. And I can tell you when I go to court defending a father, judges are waiting for fathers to step up and assert their parental rights. The problem that we're having is men do not know what their rights are. They have this idea that the system is out to get me, that this system is, you know, just for moms and I'm just, it's a losing battle for me. But the fathers who assert their rights, they look very good in court and, you know, not look very good in court, but they get the results that they want because you have to fight for your children, period. If you're going into court and you're not liking what you see, then you need to get an attorney or you need to figure out a way to fight for what you want because judges are waiting for fathers to step up. They love to see fathers stepping up for their children. They want to see it. But, but don't you think that the uh, stigma, especially for when it comes to black men in courts, that's one of the like main reasons we don't like to go to court because of the way the system criminally keeps us from going to family court and dealing with what we have. Absolutely. I did a, uh, I had to do a simple name change for my boyfriend. 
Um, he's a doctor, right? He's a doctor, but when he was younger, he got in some trouble, right? And so when we went into court, we had to do a prove up and he was just like very tense and tight because of the stick, not the stigma, the experience that the black man has in the criminal justice system. Now I said that he's a doctor, not to boast or brag, but to tell you that there is a real problem with how black Black men see the, the justice system, whether it's criminal or civil. But what I want men to know today is the civil system is totally different from the criminal justice system. It is not the same. It is just two totally different ball games. All right. Uh, um, so we're going to address the question or the comment rather on the screen. And Alana says, why does it specifically have to be black women? A lot of y'all men sound hurt. Now, maybe not all of y'all on the panel, but some in the comment section. So how do y'all want to address that? And I'll, I'll go to the- well, I'm gonna, wait, well, well, let me address that real quick. And I can only speak for myself. We're specifically addressing black women because that's all I ever date. So I can't speak on anything else. So that's speaking for me. So that's my answer to that question. Uh, like I said last night, I've never dated outside of my race. I was never attracted to anything except black women. Now, I will say this. Let me tell you, you know, whether you know it or not, Alana, you know what it feels like when a father has never taken his daughter to a father-daughter dance? You know what it's like when a father has never seen his child take their first steps? Do you know what it's like when a father has not walked his baby into the first day of school? It's a lot that goes on. It's a lot of hurt that, that has been issued out. And that goes both ways because it could be the woman in the place of the father. So there are people that are just, they go through child support and the issues of it, and it's a game. But to some people, it's really not. So yes, some fathers are hurt. Some fathers are hurt. To not be able to, 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 to interact with your child because this adult has a problem with you. Because you don't want to be with them anymore. That's not right. It's just not right. Stacy, uh, what do you have to add to that? Okay, well, we'll try to get him uh, when he gets to it. Uh, yeah, he's driving. Can you hear us? <laughs> uh, we have to come back to you when you get a uh, more of a stable connection. Okay, uh, we have to come back to you when you get a uh, more of a stable connection. Yes, yeah, I'm trying to do okay. Yeah, Hold on one second. Okay, well, we'll come right back to you. Okay. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to see if there's okay, we'll more right questions here. Okay. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to see if there's more. So go ahead. Okay, well, we'll, we'll come back to him. Okay, so let me ask this in general. It doesn't have to it can be a man or a woman. Like at what point does a person come to an understanding? Like maybe the other point, point um, understanding. Uh, Stacey, if you can mute your phone a little bit, um, that the other person is going through some things, whether they lost their job or I'm not talking about the habitual, I ain't got no job type of parent. I'm talking about you know, for example, this is a perfect, the COVID situation, a lot of people have lost their jobs. At what point do we show some compassion and say, okay, you know what, right now I'm doing okay. I, you know, I can carry, you know, the financial burden for the child for a minute. That, like, does, does that ever become a consideration? Because I'm speaking for myself. I know like with my daughter's father, um, I never received child support. He was just one of them dudes. You know, like I said, we're on good terms now, but I, you know, took care of my daughter. Um, but there was a time that we did go to court and he always showed up. I don't have a job, but he had little side things he would do. So finally, the judge got mad and says, you know, every time you came here, you said you didn't have a job. She says, what do you do? He said, I'm a chef. So she goes into her computer. She goes, OK, per my calculation. Now, this is a long time ago. She says, you can at least pay fifteen dollars an hour. So she looked at what I made and looked at what he made. And she says, now. Because he took me back and I had over him. I never paid it because he never enforced it. I wasn't going to give it to him anyway because I was taking care of my child. <laughs> but she says, now you owe her. And he blew up. I don't have a job. She says, I'm tired of you saying that you don't have a job, but you could have a job. So, but 
so I was that type of parent for a while that said, okay, I know he doesn't have it. And, you know, if I put him in a system, it's going to cause him some hardship. I'm not talking about those situations, but a guy or a woman is down on his or her luck. When do we say, okay, I'm going to give you a pass for a month or two? So once again, if you are, if you already have a child support order, you can file a modification with the court. While it's important that you understand why we have these courts of continuing jurisdiction, right? You're going to continue to go to the same court and not necessarily the same judge because we elect them every so often, but you're going to go to the same court every time and your file is available for those judges to see, to see how many times you requested a modification to your instance with the chef job the texas family code does have a clause in there that says if you are intentionally underemployed or unemployed we can go based on what you should be making so if he's a chef and he's not proven showing no documentation or showing anything a judge can very well say well this is what you should be making or this is what you could be making and so i'm going to base child support based on that right However, if you are going on hard times and this is something that's not often for you, file the modification in, in court, have your case heard before a judge. And, you know, I believe a judge will show you sympathy. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, if you have to go to a judge, you know, you have to go to a judge, but you can't get a modification. A mom cannot modify a custody order, right? If there's a think of criminally, because a lot of African American people know how the criminal justice system works, right? Think about a protective order. If the judge says there's a no contact order, you do not contact this person, right? That person, that victim, cannot say, "Oh yeah, 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 you can come by me." Because if a police officer comes and you're in contact with that person, guess what? You're going to jail because that's violation of a court order. So when you're thinking of these things, I want you to think of that custody order. I mean child support order and mom cannot say oh you know what this month don't pay because at the end of the day you're still going to occur arrears and at any point she can come back in and file an enforcement against you so anytime there's a change in, in in employment or circumstances file a modification get a ruling from a judge or get a order from a judge because you guys can agree but there still has to be an order signed off by the judge That's a, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that. Even though the mom says don't pay, it's still going to be building up. So I, I, that's a good point. Um, so somebody says, and I'll, um, I'll leave this uh, with the attorney to question. The child support system is making money off of um, having uh, people tied up into child support, the child support system. So true or false? True. But think of it this way. Attorneys who work for the Office of Attorney General, they have a salary, right? Right? And so my hourly rate, I'll tell you, is 285. It's a reasonable rate for me. Um, but think about those attorneys who are filing those enforcements on behalf of the custodial parent who are, you know, the Office of Attorney General is doing the accounting, making sure that, you know, he's paid up, he's doing what he's supposed to do. You're not doing that. You don't file the enforcement because if you do, you're going to go to a private attorney, which I'm much more expensive than what the Office of the Attorney General is. So, yes, they're making money, but it's not a substantial amount of money where it's like, oh, my God, you know, we're paying these Office of Attorney General, we're paying these assistant AGs millions and millions of dollars. They don't make that much. They don't make that much money. So what you're paying is, you know, a, a, a price to help you with your case. Now, you can come to me and you can pay that money to me and we don't have to go through the office of the attorney general's office. We can have a court order where it says, hey, you pay her directly on the first of the month. And if you know, we can do it that way. But you are going to the office of the attorney general. So, yeah, that's that's going to be something that you have to pay. Yeah. And remember, it's not just for the mom because we are honing in on child support, but the Office of the Attorney General does the possession and access order too. And so fathers, they're doing an order, a service for you to ensure that you're getting access and possession of your child. So it's not just the one way street. Okay, Demetra fell off, she'll come back in. I, I, I just think that, um, 
it, it's a tough situation nowadays in some in some in some areas dealing with this. And um, you know, right now, Donovan, I would say, you know, because I'm looking at some comments, especially Lori Justice Mitchell's been making since we started. And, you know, the money this, the money that, you know, for me, I'm I'm gonna tell you straight up, because I'm straight out the hood. You keep your kitty shouting. Mm -hmm. You can keep your kitty shouting because I don't want to deal with you. If it's a headache before we even get off into it, I know it's going to be a headache when the kid comes. And I don't have time to be trying to raise a child through my pocketbook. I don't have time for that. And that's the way that a lot. And, and you know what? I'm going to give the women credit. You know, it, it, what I can't say is the ghetto women. I can't say it's the suburban woman. But. Some of these women nowadays don't get it. You're destroying the relationship with the child. And you don't know that's what you're doing because you're the custodial parent. You just think you're controlling everything. But, but what they, about the fathers? What about the fathers who are not exercising their possession and access, who are not fighting for their rights to their children? They're they're messing up their relationship with their children too, because at the end of the day, as a parent. A child is expensive. I don't care what nobody say. For the longest, you know, until my son started going through his puberty and stuff, I stayed in a one-bedroom apartment. But then when my son started going through puberty, he was like, you know what? You and I can't even sleep in the same bed no more because that's a problem, right? And so it's more expensive to raise a child. Now I have to stay in the two-bedroom, you know? And there's things that kids want to do, extracurricular activities, taking them to and from these extracurricular activities, making sure they have tutoring. If your child is not with their father, you know, there I don't care what nobody say, therapy is essential for a child who is being raised without their parent, whether that's mother or or father because at the end of the day when they get older they're going to have to deal with those issues so it's very expensive to raise a child outside of you know i mean period not even in a marriage but it's expensive to raise a child but we're talking about child support the money aspect of it all but we can flip it and talk about fathers who just because they have to pay child support and in the state of texas is really not that much because we have caps right that are not exercising first, their third, their fifth weekend. They're not getting their 30 days or 42 days in the summer. They're not exercising their uh, alternate holidays. So let's talk about them because that's affecting the child too. Let's let's talk about this. I was raised by a strong black woman that made $119 a week. She had two kids and no husband. She never complained. She did what she needed to do. Now I got women nowadays making two, two three thousand dollars a week, and all they do is whine and complain about being a parent, whether single or with a man. You want a child, accept the responsibilities because we know sometimes it's not gonna work out perfect. The man may leave or the woman may leave or whatever. Man or woman up and stop complaining. My mom made $119 a week. And she took care of daycare, put food on the table. These folk get two, three thousand and they can't even put, put their goddamn shoes on no more. I don't think it matters what amount of money a mother makes or what amount a mother a father makes who's the custodial parent at the end of the day this person did not make this child by themselves and so there is a level of responsibility on the other side that must be addressed so i don't care how much money someone is making that other parent needs to contribute to raising that child period the end. There's 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 nothing to it. And we have to get out of this mentality as African American people about struggling. We want to struggle in love. We want to struggle in raising kids. We want to struggle in like we want to struggle in everything as if that's right. It's not okay to struggle. It's not okay. Right. You know, uh, there was a question that somebody asked. Um, the statute of limitation on uh, of rears. Now in California, there is no statute of limitation. That's California. And I know that. But uh, what about uh, Texas. In the state of Texas, uh, retroactive uh, child support is considered to be in the best interest of the child to go back four years. Um, now, if there is another reason why they should do more than four years, that argument can be heard. And if there's a, a compelling reason for them to do more than four years, then the court can. But it's it's in the it's four years. Hello. <laughs> right. 
I don't know. We have a like uh, everybody's using the, um, the air conditioner and stuff in our neighborhood, so the uh, power just glitched. I was like, ah. So my apologies for that. Um, and I was listening to the conversation just a little bit. But um, so Marcus uh, has vehemently been inboxing me and uh, he wanted me to ask this question. So I think I, I read his question wrong. And basically earlier, uh, this is in regards to the $30,000. He says that he owes $30,000 in back child support for a child that he has never met. And so the mom has been dodging him and all of that. So what what does he what does he need to do? Is it, is it a lost cause at this point or? So he's never met the child. Why? It says I, it sounds okay. like the mom has been dodging him. Is what from what I understand. Okay. So he needs to. Is there a court order in place? Sounds like there is, because he's thirty thousand dollars in arrears. So what I would do is I would file an enforcement in the county in which the case was uh, first, wh wherever the child support order came out of, file a motion for enforcement so that he can a actually see this. But the child is 18 now, right? Four the child is 14. So he said he's been paying on and off, but not consistently. I guess that's why he's accrued the uh, $30,000. The obligation doesn't stop because you did not see the child. There's remedies in place for you to see your child. So if you care, if you want to see your child, file a motion for enforcement so that you can see your child, so that you could possibly, if, if there's, you know, you can place geographical restrictions on them if she's dodging you you can bring that up to the court and say hey this woman has been dodging me i think it's in the best interest of this child to put geographical restrictions so that i can have a continuous relationship with my child i don't have to worry about her dodging me in the future and you can get makeup time for all the time that you were unable to see your child so it's up to you if you want to see your child it's not up to her it's up to you if you want to do it file the enforcement Okay, so I see that we have Lanisha and uh, Stacy on. Well, um, what did you guys want to add to the conversation? Because we've been here for about an hour and a half now. Um, what did you guys want to add? I think they're frozen again. <laughs> yeah. um, so when you guys um, become unfrozen, then we'll um, we'll hear from you. So I'm trying to get to some of these other comments because I know that people had a lot to say. Um, and then it's a hot topic. Uh, it's, huh? It's a hot topic. I can see. Um, you know, I let me see. I had a question on here. So someone asked sort of a, a fun, maybe not so fun question. What if um someone hits the lotto? How do how 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 would they go about those? Is that <laughs> move to Argentina? Run. Run. <laughs> <laughs> Run! Yeah. We went half on the paper. We ain't went half on the ticket. Right. All right. So the Texas Family Code says any income. Right, your net resources are any income. So if that's lottery, if that's a certain level of disability, sometimes disability, if you're getting tips, if you're getting bonuses, all that is going to be considered in determining the amount of child support you're supposed to pay. So maybe your child support increases for the year of 2020 because you hit the lottery, but maybe next year it decreases if you file the modification like you're supposed to because you no longer have that money. So why don't you yeah. why don't you hit the lotto, and as soon as you know that ticket is good, and you got that money, call them people, and I want to pay off all my child support, mm. and they're your money, and I'm gone. Now I come out in the paper. Gary Monroe won the lottery, and you is paid, and I don't have to deal with you. Right, right, yeah, but uh, but isn't there always a lot of cases where like uh, pro athletes, especially NBA players, they usually file. Once they're out of the league, or that it's a normal. Well, I do have the privilege of representing some uh, athletes. There's an echo. Yeah, it needs to be muted. People need to. Can we hear? Can we hear me now? Okay. 
Um, so with, with celebrities, um, depending on their salary, depending on their contract, depending on different bonuses, a lot of times what we do with them is we come to a mediated settlement agreement. So we don't have this back and forth. We understand that their income is going to change, that they're going to get certain bonuses. We can't always calculate what their bonuses are going to be. And so in mediation, what we do is come up with a number that is reasonable and works for both parties. If not, you know, we have to go to court for it. But nine times out of 10, most athletes find a way to settle their case in mediation. They don't want to go to court. And so they'll figure it out that way. And we can put a clause in the mediated settlement agreement. Remember, that agreement is binding. You can't really change it. Um, we put a clause in there that maybe in two years we'll, you know, recalculate what child support is or something like that. But those people are different. Usually they can buy out their baby mamas and they can give them whatever it is that they want. And so they don't really have those type of issues. OK, so let's touch upon this. And I know we've uh, been here for a while, so we'll uh, wrap up um, in just a few, I guess, uh, Gary, if that's up to you guys. I know you guys are tired. Um, so we know, even though parents have a custody order, right? The judge has sealed it and said, this is the way it's going to go. Non-custodial parent shows up to the visitation and the custodial parent says, well, I, you know what? We had plans. You know, um, my auntie, baby sister and them, you know, is they, they birthday party or whatever. And so you can't get the child. All right. So father, mom, whoever is a non-custodial parent calls the popo and say, hey, I have a court order. I need you to get over here and assist me with getting my child. Now, I know in California, um, police officers may or may not intervene. And a lot of times they're like, you know what? You just got to take them back to court. And they often don't assist the non-custodial parent. So um uh, our attorney, can you can you speak to that? I mean, because I know it would be a headache if I was a non-custodial parent. Every time I showed up to pick my child up, the other parent is giving me, you know, a whole bunch of excuses to why I can't get my child. And it's costly to continue to go back to court, especially if you have a good job to modify. So uh, so what's your best advice? I keep trying to pull up one of one of these orders that I have to share the screen so that I can show people. But in your order, there is language um, that says there's a notice to peace officers. In that notice, it says a peace officer may use any reasonable force, any force reasonably necessary to enforce the order within that paper. Right. So number one is if you're dealing with that type of parent. Make sure that you have a copy, a certified copy of your order with you at all times. Sometimes police officers will help. Sometimes they will. If you have the proper documentation, they will help. They will assist you. They will, you know, make sure that they use reasonable force to get you your, your child. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they won't get involved. If it's one of those situations where they're not getting involved and you do want to contact an attorney, if it's like summer visitation, what we can file is uh, a writ of habeas, which means we it's basically bring the child to court so that we can see if your uh, if your order is valid and if there is a reasonable if, if there is a reason for this parent to deny you visitation for some reason, because there are cases where you know, there's been molestation, there's been abuse in some way. And as a parent, I'm not allowing you to have my child. I don't care what's in a court order. Do what you need to do. Um, but if that's not a situation, um, then you can go before the court and then the court will issue a writ of attachment, which then uh, orders a court, I mean, a police officer to go get your child. So the custody order that you have it's a protection for police officers that say, if you're going by this order, there won't be any civil action against you if you enforce it. Um, but a writ of attachment is an order from a, from a court to say, you must go get this child for the parent. So there's a couple of ways that you can handle that. My best advice would be contact an attorney. If you can't afford one, at least, at least schedule a consultation. All right, so Stacy and Lanisha, looks like you are back. Um, what, what what do you all have to add to the uh, to the conversation? I think you guys are in a better spot for reception now. So what do you, what do you have to add to the conversation? The conversation. 
You go first. Um. Well, to, for for me, um, I'm just gonna put it like this, flat out. A whole lot of this, a whole lot of this, to me, it, it just seems like a a whole bunch of legal uh, mumbo jumbo. Okay, the reason why I'm saying that is because it's almost like it's a game. A lot of these people play, you know what I mean, with people's lives, which is unfortunate. You know, I understand that there are certain people that their situations, they they know how to deal with each other. But then you have some people that don't. They may need the court, may need the law, whatever. But what's so ridiculous to me is. Is that. Why? Why do we even have a system in place? You know what I mean? If. If by seem like a lot of times by default, the non-custodial parent gets just the tail end of everything, whether they understand their rights or don't understand their rights. You know what I mean? And I understand there are certain things in place to protect that. But at the same time, I'm just trying to figure out where 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 do they, you know, I mean, draw the line with a lot of this stuff, because I don't understand how, like you say, if if. If a uh, if a parent is not one allowing the other other parent to get their children a, a specific time, and they're supposed to, when I deal with my situation, um, I didn't even want to. I didn't even want to deal with going to court, spending a whole bunch of money, and so I had to figure out the best way I possibly could to try to work things out with the other parent on my own, even though they didn't. Uh, they didn't, you know, hold into that bargain most of the time, but I just wasn't going to go through all that non unnecessary nonsense. And I always thought about this also, also was the fact that, OK, why is it almost seems like I could be wrong? Why does it seem like to me it's always by default that most of the time it's either the mother ends up with the children is if to say that the father is not well equipped enough to take care of a child when there are a lot of great fathers that can do the job. If the fathers, if the father is making enough money to take care of the children, you know what I'm saying? And if the and if the mother does not have the means, why not let the child just live with the father? But understand every situation is different. I get that. But it seems like to me, by default, whether it's a divorce, whether it's whatever, the children end up with the mother and sometimes vice versa. It could be that the mother is probably capable and well capable of taking care of the children, but they may give them to the father for whatever reason. But for the most for the most part, it's always the mother get the children, not the father. And you have some great fathers that are willing and able and they can do it. But. Like I said before, they get the tail end of the stick. I don't know, understand that. Why is the system set up that way? Well, it may not be. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. So this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna allow uh, the attorney who has been so gracious. Um if he has my I mute your uh, phone. he has been so gracious and I mean just super helpful and getting answering all these questions. We're gonna allow her to address that. And then I um, also want you to um, address, ultimately, what should people do to avoid child support, right? And then please give the people your information, because I saw a couple of people on here say that they needed to contact you. So give them all your information um, in order for them to do that. So we're going to allow our attorney to have the last words. So I'm just to slide this cash app to y'all, okay? So if any of this information has been helpful to you in any way, if I answer any of your questions, cash app Brenda's My Lawyer, B-R-E-N-D-A-S, My Lawyer, okay? And you can find me on Instagram at Brenda's My Lawyer. And when you go there, you can see all my information on how to contact me, how to schedule a consultation. I think his question Do is. Do me a favor. To, uh, type that in the comment section so people can see it. And Gary, maybe uh, can you pin it so people can see that? Yeah. I, I don't think I can. Uh, 
I can send it to a private chat to you guys. You see it, Gary? Hold on. What is your cash app, sweetheart? Brenda's my lawyer, B R E N D A S. If you go my to the live comments, you can see her. She typed it in on the live comment, uh, Gary. Um, we see where it says uh, live comments and then private chat. So go to the private chat and you can see it there. Mm -hmm. okay. Got it. I put it wrong. You, you got it? I can't. I can't. Do it. And Brenda's <laughs> But I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bounce off of this individual's uh, comment. Let me tell you, the fathers who get default judgment are one who don't take child custody or child support uh, hearing seriously, or two, they don't fight for mm -hmm. their children. You do not have to right. agree to anything unless a judge has ordered it. So if you're not comfortable, the, the, the number one thing that I see is the standard possession order, right? The first, the third, the fifth weekend, 30 days in the summer, alternating holidays. In Texas, we have also an expanded possession. So if you're in close proximity and you have a good relationship with your child, you can do a standard possession order with elections, meaning you get your child overnight on Thursdays instead of from six to eight. Like you get expanded time with your child. Um, but a lot of people don't know their rights. They don't know what they can get. They don't understand. They mm -hmm. have there's this sig stigma that the, the system is against them. But let me tell you, my clients and the people who come through my office, they're fighting for their children. And so they get so much more than the standard possession order. He made a comment about mothers always getting primary custody. That's not right. I hate to talk about my losses, but I recently lost the case with mom who was the primary caregiver to dad who wanted custody of his child. And it wasn't anything that we did wrong, but the standard is what's in the best interest of the children. Are you in a, in a stable environment? What is your work schedule like? Who is the child most connected to and, and who has the child been living with for most of the time? How are they doing in school? Do they have any disabilities? Like there are several factors that go into who's going to be the primary caregiver. But let me tell you, if there's an AG case and I file for child support and you don't contest custody, then that's right. on you. That's on you. That's not the system. That's you not knowing. And I tell people all the time, yes, getting an attorney is expensive. Even my clients, when they come to me with a custody case, I tell them this. Custody cases are my most expensive cases. And two, this is going to be very draining and very long. I have a case, a custody case that I've been on for two years. We still haven't made a determination on who's going to be the primary caregiver. But if you are willing to fight for your child, there's no money, there's no time, there's no anything that's going to stop you from getting what you want, right? And so my argument, and not even my argument, but what I see in the courts is that fathers are just not, they don't know and they're not fighting. So if you can't do anything else, if you cannot afford an attorney, get a consultation my consultation i'm going to tell you what i can do for you and i'm going to tell you what you can do for yourself so it's not just about you hiring me it's how can i help you you pay for an hour of my time any question that you have any issue that you have i'm going to help you address it and when you leave my office you're going to have some type of strategy on how you can handle it now you're not an attorney so you might mess up doing it but i'm going to tell you what you need to do but a lot of fathers don't do that they go to these ag courts by themselves and they don't fight well, yeah i'm just going to say this real quick i can tell you guys this especially the fathers out there because i went through it just like everybody else went through it the same laws they use against you, you could use those exact same laws for your benefit. So that's the best advice that I can give you. All right. And so in closing, how can one avoid child support court ultimately? You can. So the AG's office does not have to be a part of your order. 
you can have a private, you can have an order that does not even mention anything with the attorney general's office. So long as mom or dad for the, the, the let's say the children have not received TANF, they've not received uh, med governmental medical assistance in any way, you can avoid the AG's office totally by getting some type of agreement and paper and saying, you know what, we don't need the AG's office to account for how much money um, you've been paying for child support. We don't need them to file enforcement if you don't pay. If you don't pay, I'll file enforcement through my private attorney. Um, but you don't have to involve the attorney general's office. You don't. You can file your SAPSER and you guys can go to mediation and agree to an amount. It doesn't have to be based on statutory guidelines. If I say, hey, Gary, you know what? I know that you, whatever, pay a hundred dollars. We can agree to, don't pay nothing. I can agree for you to not pay anything. I can agree for whatever it is that I want. Um, and we can draft an order that says what we want it to say. And we don't have to involve the baby's office. But child support is going to be the only way to not have to pay child support is if the parent who has primary custody says, I don't want your child support. And that and what I was looking for, and Al actually um, hit the nail on the head. He says, for one, have a great relationship with parents and choose wisely with who you lay down with. Because as I said yesterday, if you can't see yourself being with that person for at least 18 years, Put your clothes back on and do a 360 out the room and say, all that looks good, but I, I know the job is dangerous and I don't want to sign up for it. So, uh, <laughs> time out. Uh, Doris Brown said mediation is full of bullshit. There is a difference between mediation with the attorney general's office and private mediation. Mediation with the attorney general's office, 100% bullshit. They're there to do a job and they're going to do their job and either you agree or you don't agree. What I would recommend is if you are summoned to go to a mediation for child support court, you can file your own answer. I tell my clients who cannot afford my services all the time, go to texashelp.org and pull their different filing, like motions and stuff and file a motion for that. Most of the courts here in Harris County require mediation before a final trial. You'll have to pay for a private mediator. It's anywhere between $250 to $450 uh, for four hours. But these attorneys are, are experienced attorneys. They've been before these judges before. Just like I'm telling you the law tonight, they're going to tell you, hey, this is what's in the Texas Family Code. And so those mediations aren't bullshit. They're very helpful in resolving matters with families. So yes and no. Mediation, I love mediation. I'd rather do mediation because it allows parents to dictate what's going to happen with their family as opposed to me exposing you on the stand and making you look like a, a horrible parent that would be in mediation because that's my job when i go to trial i'm making you look like shit. i'm making you look like an unfit parent who does not deserve to have possession of not possession but custody primary custody over this child that is my job right and so um we have been here for about um hour and 50 minutes and so we could honestly be here forever but we are all going to get out of here please you guys uh the link is up there brenda's my lawyer at cash app if you found something that was helpful even if you didn't you just enjoyed um listening to her give a lot of great advice go ahead and visit her cash app and, and leave a little something in there right uh <laughs> there you go donovan that big baller <laughs> um, so I'm going to actually turn it over to you now, Gary. I tell you, uh, to answer your question, you know, how do you avoid child support court? Very, very simple for Gary W. Monroe. You can call me Jackathon Joe, and you can keep your coochie shouting. That's how I feel. I'm not going through it no more, period. So I want you to understand one thing that tomorrow night I got my man coming through tomorrow night, man. Leon Chavis, the goody goody man gonna be here tomorrow night. See that goody goody kitchen child support coach. So tomorrow night, we're going to take it to the trail ride. 
We've been in the middle of the war zone. My good attorney friend, attorney Brenda. My beautiful co-host, Demetri K. My new co-host, Donovan, and I am the five-star general. Yeah.